Hi guys, welcome to the video. Please see the timestamps in the description below for the contents. Hope you enjoy. Today I'm taking a look at the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 285, the Gainwood model to be exact. The GeForce GTX 285 is part of the NVIDIA Tesla architecture and was released in January of 2009, making this car 10 years old. Whereas the original GTX 280 was released in June of 2008. This card along with later releases of the 200 series have a smaller manufacturer size of 55 nanometers from 65, allowing these cards to run cooler with a reduced die size for better efficiency and, allow and allowing for higher clock speeds for better performance. The card has 240 cooler cores running at, running at a default clock speed of 648 MHz, a shader clock speed of 1476 MHz. The 1GB of GDDR3 memory runs at a default clock speed of 1242MHz on a 512-bit bus giving a total of 159GB per second of bandwidth. It runs using PCIe Generation 2.1. This card when it comes to gaming however is limited by its DirectX 10 support so it won't be able to run most modern titles today as it would need to have DirectX 11 capabilities. This specific card has a dual fan design with four copper pipes coming out of it, not the traditional blower style cards. For I.O. it has one VGA port, a DVI port and a HDMI port. I like the choice of I.O. ports, as most older monitors are guaranteed to work with it without having to use adapters. It also requires two 6 pin PCIe connectors and has a max power draw of 204 watts. The test system consists of an i7-3770 clocked at 4.25 GHz with two 8 GB sticks of Corsair Vengeance RAM clocked at 1866 MHz with a latency of 9 cycles. It has a 120 GB SSD, 1 TB Western Digital Blue 7.2K hard drive, all of this used with an Asus P8Z77M.0 motherboard. With all that said, let's get on with the video. Ok drivers, Nvidia stopped updating the drivers in April 2016 for these older cards, so this card won't be optimised with the latest updates of supported games. The driver version I installed was 342.01. Ok so these are the details of the card so pause the video if you'd like to have a better look.
Okay, we're now at the end of the video. So as you can see, the card still holds up in some games today. The main issue, however, is driver support, which is a real shame as they stopped it in 2016, because these new driver releases would better optimise some of the games tested, for example CSGO. So should you buy this card in 2019? Yes, if you can find it a good price. I picked this one up for £5.50 on eBay, which I thought was a really good deal. Also, yes, you should pick one of these cards up if you only play older games or games that require DirectX 10 or below. So this card could still be an option for some. Finally, if you don't mind about the electricity bill, then you should definitely should pick up this card. There are more efficient cards out there with better performance, for example the GTX 750 Ti, which might be worth getting instead of this one, but obviously that one's still at a higher price. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend buying this card. Okay, that's it from me. Please leave a like if you like the video, comment what I could improve on, or what videos you'd like me to make in the future. Finally, so consider subscribing if you like the content, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.